going on everybody? This is Kyle here with All Dogs Off Road and we have our shop exterior on the lift. We are going to be going over coil bucket contact, what it looks like, what causes it, and why. Anything with a two and a half inch spacer on it will 100% guaranteed to have coil bucket contact. And sometimes even a half inch spacer. <laughs> yeah. So. so your Nissan 4x4s, your uh, Frontier, your Xterra, the R51 Pathfinder, and to some extent this even applies to the Nissan Titan all have a what's a fairly unique arrangement for the upper control arm compared to the other manufacturers like toyota ford chevy etc so most of your manufacturers will have a control arm that wraps directly around the coil bucket now nissan when they were designing these platforms they chose to have one arm of the upper control arm directly above the coil bucket here and you'll see this is a stock factory uh coil and shock right now and it's at full droop and you'll see that there's probably about an inch to an inch and a quarter of clearance between the control arm and the coil bucket so there's no coil bucket contact happening here but what you'll notice is that as you increase the length of this overall assembly you're going to be closing up this gap quite significantly and the intention of the video is to show you um, the clearance issue that's created with a spacer. So we've replaced that crusty old coilover with this takeoff Bilstein 4600, but your lengths should be exactly the same. So you're, it's not gonna affect our experiment here at all. But your coilover length on a Nissan is very specific. And this overall length here is what's gonna determine or affect whether you have coil bucket contact or not. So a lot of guys wanna lift their vehicle and they wanna do it cheaply and they will go for spacers. And we have some uh, spacers of ours here. And then we've got everyone's favorite rough country spacer right here. Now, you know, in principle, when you're adding these spacers, uh, when you're adding these spacers to your coilover assembly, you are increasing the overall length. Now, when you increase the overall length of your assembly here, uh, you are taking up the clearance uh, at the upper control arm. Okay, so we've installed the coilover with our half inch lift spacer, and I'm gonna show you how much of a difference it's made in our uh, clearance here. So you'll see just with that quarter inch thick spacer that gives you half inch lift, we've probably halved the amount of, and this isn't even fully tightened down, so it might even be less than that once everything's tightened up. So you've significantly decreased the amount of clearance available between the upper control arm and the coil bucket. Um, now on a 4600, uh, sometimes you can get away with running a half inch spacer and not have coil bucket contact, but if you're running a Bill C 5100, that's about just under a quarter inch uh, longer in overall length. So running that spacer with a 5100 would create coil bucket contact. The purpose here is just to show you, even with a factory piece, how close uh, it gets even with something as modest as a half inch lift spacer. So we showed you what just a half inch lift spacer is gonna do for your, your clearance uh, at the upper control arm. Now we're gonna put this uh, two and a half inch lift spacer on there and, and show you um, just how uh, tight that is. So we got the coil over in, and as I had mentioned before, you'll see there's no way you're gonna be able to get everything down. You see your clearance issue before you're even able to get your nut threaded up here to start tightening everything. One other thing that's not very often talked about with spacers too is that you're gonna start feeling ball joint bind right about here as well. Um, two and a half inch spacer is coming real close if you run a three inch spacer, you're gonna find that you're only gonna be able to get your spindle 
probably to about here and you're really gonna have to force to get everything over and lined up and connected and the reason for that is you're binding your lower ball joint which is uh, a big no-no so besides you know not running spacers as we generally recommend especially don't run a three inch lift spacer And like magic, we've removed the coil spring from our uh, coilover assembly here. Um, and it's gonna make it easier for us to show you um, as we bring this up, um, the clearance issue that's created. So you'll see right now, I physically can't connect the spindle because the ball joint's probably right about here, the terminating point of it. And we're already on the coil bucket. So when a person is installing a spacer lift, they actually, they have to get everything in place and then jack up on the bottom of the spindle just in order to be able to even connect the uh, spindle to the upper control arm. So we got the coil over in with minus the spring obviously and the spacer. We're gonna show you now what exactly all the problems it causes is. So if you come in here, we can show you. First one obviously is the coil bucket contact. You bring it up and you set it back down, it hits. Another issue that you also run into is because of the extra length of the shock, when this shock is fully compressed, you won't be able to hit your bump stop either. So you run the, the possibility of blocking your spring on the coilover as, as well. We're gonna throw some, we have some marking tape or marking paint here. We're gonna throw some on the inner part of the upper control arm to show you exactly where you will have coil bucket contact at. It's a lot, but okay, good. So we bring it down and it hits. Along with where this is at, here I can make it and get it on there more. If you have coil bucket contact, you'll have a you'll have paint missing here. So it'll be obviously all the way from here, and then it'll also be up here. In order to properly do these spacers. You need an aftermarket upper control arm that has a higher clearance bend in it to clear the coil bucket and we offer them as well as SPC. We are going to install this and show you exactly what it does to clear. As you can see the arm is installed and there is a ton of clearance here now between the actual arm and the coil bucket where the factor arm would touch this one clears because of this extra bend that we have you have full range of motion up and down and there is no trimming involved with the with the ADO upper control arm as well as well as extra clearance these arms have additional caster and camber built into them to help with alignment after you have lifted two to two and a half inches so we specifically developed our uh, ADO upper control arm with an extended travel shock in mind. Uh, an extended travel uh, shock or coil over like a Radflow or a Fox or whatnot uh, is also physically longer, kind of in a similar way that a factory shock with a spacer is longer. Um, and a longer uh, extended travel coil over will cause coil bucket contact. Uh, on the budget end of things, I know that Rough Country does uh, a preloaded front shock uh, that is physically longer and that will also cause coil bucket contact just like a spacer lift will. So at All Dogs Off-Road, if you follow us on social media or if you're active in any of the Facebook user groups, you know that we talk a lot about coil bucket contact, the clearance issue that a spacer creates, and uh, generally our recommendation not to lift with a spacer because uh, in the long term, in order to do it right, it will cost you more money than a comparable uh, lift kit like our RC Killa, which actually lifts uh, via uh, a coil spring rather than a spacer, which in physically increases the length of your assembly. Uh, all said and done, if you were to pick up a set of spacers, you're thinking you're into it, you know, 200 or $300, and then you got a lift for your truck, but then you come to find that you have a 
uh, clearance issue um, that is very loud. Every time that the suspension down cycles, your arm will hit the coil bucket with force, um, which is annoying, but also over time can lead to a failure of the upper control arm. We've seen uh, pictures a number of times where the control arm, the factory sheet metal control arm has split either forward or backward of the ball joint because it's not made to handle you know the stress of physically impacting um, another part of the truck so to do a spacer lift you're going to probably end up being seven or eight hundred dollars in uh, parts you know even before labor and alignment whereas if you look at something like our rc killa which right now uh, prices uh, a little bit under $500. Um, you know, in the long term, the RC Killa is actually the the less expensive way to properly lift a Nissan 4x4. To kind of reiterate the problems that a spacer lift creates, first, your clearance issue coil bucket contact. Second, depending on the length of your spacer, uh, ball joint bind at the lower control arm. And then finally, third, um, you run the risk of collapsing your shock on an up cycle because the uh, spacer has increased the length here and doesn't allow for proper engagement of the bump stop that is located on your lower control arm. So uh, we understand that a lot of guys are doing this sort of thing for aesthetics and generally here at the shop we develop with uh, uh, off-roading and overlanding in mind so you know we build functional lift kits. Um, but we we want to educate you and make sure that you're uh, doing it, you know, properly or uh, in the best way possible, given the uh, uh, limitations and design constraints that the that the uh, front suspension here uh, allows for. Hopefully, uh, this is a good visual demonstration for you to show you uh, what coil bucket contact is why we prefer a different means of lifting a vehicle and um, that's it.